Hi, my name is Carl Herzog. I'm the public historian for the USS Constitution Museum. For a lot of people working from home these days, one of the new workplace noises is the sound of kids playing in the background, whether it's their own kids or, in my case, the sound of the neighbor's kids playing in their backyard. I'm always astounded at the adventures I hear them concocting out of just their toys and imaginations in the backyard. American ideas of childhood and even adventure have changed a lot in the last 200 years. At the beginning of the 1900s, most kids, with the exception of the most upper class, were destined to begin working as soon as they were big enough to be useful. And that included, in some cases, ending up having much bigger adventures as members of the U.S. Navy. We hear a lot about the idea of boys on board ships uh, in the Navy on sailing warships, serving as either powder monkeys or cabin boys. Certainly in the Royal Navy, where there was a high demand for additional crew and a shortage of personnel, uh, younger boys, teens, and even as young as uh, eight, nine years old were not uncommon. In the U.S. Navy, there wasn't as strong a need for additional sailors, and so there were not as many young boys on board, but they were still present. And we did have evidence of young boys serving on board USS Constitution as young as eight and nine years old, although most of them tended to be a little bit older into their teens. When we say they were boys on board, regardless of their age, we mean they were quite literally designated with the rank of boy. It didn't necessarily reflect on their age uh, as much as it did on the fact that they were considered the least experienced member of the crew on board and tended to be designated to jobs like cleaning or working as a servant for other officers. A number of them, however, did end up having really long careers in the U.S. Navy as a result, rising up in the ranks to even that of commander. To the boys who were able to begin uh, as young boys on board and rise up through the ranks were orphans uh, who did so under the tutelage of officers beginning on USS Constitution. John Ripley Madison lost his parents at a very early age and became a boy on first USS Constitution and then USS John Adams when he was only nine years old. Then, under the tutelage of Commodore Edward Preble, Madison was able to come back as a midshipman and get his warrant in 1810 and was uh, promoted to master's mate in 1812. From there, Madison went on and became uh, a lieutenant and then commanded uh, the USS Lynx, a schooner that was capturing pirates in the Gulf of Mexico. Sadly for Madison, though, when he was only 25, in command of the Lynx, he set sail from St. Mary's, Georgia in January of 1820, bound for Jamaica, but neither the ship nor the crew were ever heard from again. It's unclear whether they were lost in weather or to some other circumstances. Another orphan who found his way on board USS Constitution and rose up to the ranks to have a much longer career in the U.S. Navy was George Syrian. George Syrian was a Greek refugee who lost his parents at the age of six in 1824 during the Greek War for Independence against the Ottoman Turks. The story goes that his mother put him in a boat to escape, and we're not sure how he ended up getting rescued or what exactly happened, but he ended up joining the crew of USS Constitution in 1827 while the ship was still in the Mediterranean and began serving as a boy on board. He stayed with USS Constitution for the voyage back across the Atlantic to Boston. There he was taken in by Lieutenant Robert Randolph, who sponsored his education. Randolph eventually ended up sending Syrian off to uh, an education with George Marshall, another uh, Greek native who had written what became the definitive guide to military and naval gunnery in 1822. Marshall taught Syrian all the arts of being a naval gunner, and Syrian then returned as a gunner on board USS Constitution. Originally appointed as a gunner in 1837, Syrian went on to serve in 37 successive tours on 20 different ships, seven shore stations, including three separate tours of duty on USS Constitution, making him the only sailor to uh, ever serve three duties on the ship. He was actually on board USS Constitution for its circumnavigation uh, of the globe in the 1840s. 
Syrian's long career later included becoming a gunnery instructor at the Naval Academy during the American Civil War and serving in the Asiatic Squadron in Japan and Hong Kong before finally retiring. He had one of the longest careers ever in the U.S. Navy, and as a result, the Surface Navy Association each year awards the George Syrian Meritorious Service Award for a chief petty officer in the Navy who exemplifies service warfare excellence. It's quite a career and quite an astonishment for a young Greek refugee who started out as only a young boy on USS Constitution. The USS Constitution Museum is extremely proud to house an extensive archive of the papers, records, correspondence of George Syrian, as well as artwork including this portrait that was commissioned by Lieutenant Randolph when Syrian was still a boy. If you'd like to learn more about the life and history of George Syrian or John Ripley Madison, or learn more about the role of boys on board USS Constitution, you can do so at the USS Constitution Museum's website. In our Explore the Collection section, you can see this portrait and some of the records associated with George Syrian. You can read the crew profile of John Ripley Madison and read a blog written by our colleagues about the role of boys on board the ship. Their adventures were far more dramatic than the kids probably playing in the background in your living room or your neighbor's backyard. But those adventures could be more dangerous too. Several of the boys who served in the rank of boy uh, died while in service on board USS Constitution. But they all played an important role in the continuing operation of the ship during the early 1800s. And for those who did survive, it, for many of them, became access to either a better life on shore or a long career in the U.S. Navy. Thanks for taking the time with us. If you have questions about any of this or thoughts or suggestions on other things you'd like to see our videos about, don't hesitate to comment on any of the USS Constitution Museum social media. Thanks a lot.